Welcome to the Michigan Golfer Show. Join us each week as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great game. Hi, this is Terry Moore I'm here at the West Michigan Golf Show, the 18th West Michigan Golf Show in downtown Grand Rapids. And we're joined today by one of America's top teachers and golf personalities, Dr. Gary Wyron. And Gary's making his second trip here to Grand Rapids. Gary, remember that first trip? You got stuck in Detroit. You had to take a cab over to Grand Rapids, and I was the organizer of the show, and I tell you, you were, you were a sight for sore eyes when you finally made it to the show on Friday night. Well, it was a rather auspicious start, but I'll tell you what, it's great to be back in Michigan. As you know, uh, this is kind of a second for me. Uh, my wife's from Traverse City. I, I went to the UN, got a master's, coached football for Bump Elliott a couple years, and uh, was a pro at Meadowbrook in Detroit. Yeah. So uh, Michigan's a special place for me, even though I'm a Nebraska kid. Ah, that's great. Uh, Gary, I'm, I'm fascinated with some of your uh, uh, topics that you've chosen for this weekend uh, here at the seminars for the West Michigan Golf Show. As you know, the golf show has has uh, proud of its collection of terrific golf teachers, including yourself over the years. I know you have a couple interesting uh, titles this weekend, and maybe in Cliff Notes fashion, you could share with our viewers um, some of the things you're going to be talking about. The mental game, how tour players think under pressure. Um, and I'm thinking back of my buddies who they're coming down the last couple holes and they're thinking about breaking par and many times unfortunately they collapse under the weight mm -hmm. of maybe the expectation of playing their best round. What can the average players th uh, learn from how tour players handle pressure? Well, well first of all your buddies are, are in the wrong uh, time zone. They are ahead of themselves. They are not in the present. You go to any psychologist who's talking to you about best performance, you've got to stay right there at the moment with that shot, not with what maybe I'll make a par on 17 and 18 and get under 80 for the first time. You make this shot, and then you go make the next shot. Bobby Jones once said, you know, it took me a long time, but I finally learned it's one shot at a time to your very best ability, do it, and then go do it again. He said, it sounds simple, but it, take me, it took me a long time yeah. to learn it. So staying in the present is one thing. The other thing is how champions think, is champions are absolutely positive. There is no negativity. Do you ever hear Tiger Woods come in after a round and say, God, I was stunk out there today, I was terrible. No, even if he didn't play well, he says, you know, I had a lot of good things going. Yeah. And he focuses on the positive. My neighbor, Jack Nicholas, who lives just five minutes and $50 million away, well, he was the strongest yeah. mind in that, in that yeah. sense. I, I was at the Kemper Open, he came into the trailer. I was inside, and he was signing some things, you know, where you sign in as the tour, as the player. Dan Pohl, your good Michigan guy, is standing right. over in the corner. Jack had had back problems and hadn't been playing lately and, and hadn't been putting too well. And so Jack's signing things, and he says, oh, hi, Jack, to Danny says. He says, oh, hi, Dan, yeah, how you doing? And Dan says, well, Jack, glad to see you coming back to play. If you start putting a little better, you're going to win. And he just looks right at Dan, and he says, I'm putting just fine. You know, he would not accept yeah. a negative comment or anything that wasn't upbeat. And so great players don't focus on negative things. Gary, you're, you're, you're known as a celebrated golf historian and, and collector. Uh, and I have this question for you. For, for your, how you've covered the game, you've looked at the game from a historical standpoint. Um, if you could pick one foursome to be a monk, living in deceased golfers or authors, who would that foursome be? Who, who would like to be in your in your all-time foursome of golfers? Well, uh, my first pick would be Walter Hagen. Uh, Walter was instrumental in my courtship. Uh, he's you know Traverse City in the summertime, Detroit AC in the in the dinner in winter time. So he has this special connection with Michigan, and uh, he was a man that was a world, not not just a, a, a golfing figure, a world figure. I mean, kings he played with and, and, and prime ministers and everybody. And he was a wonderful, he was really a wonderful human being in the terms of everybody loved him. Okay. So Waller would be my very first pick. Uh, and by the way, just as an aside, I'm playing with one of my favorites next month, Arnold Palmer. Uh, so uh, I'm going to get that done. So I don't have to put him in this group. All right. uh, Who's I, your caddy for that? you have a caddy, Gary? Uh, no, I don't know yet. <laughs> You're gonna get some we're going to we're going to play with Bay Hill though. All right. And uh, the the next one, I I guess uh, the next one would would have to be Bobby Jones. Uh, and uh, I've played with Byron Nelson. He would be in my pick, but I've already I've already played with him. 
And I guess we'd have to say uh, ben, uh, ben, Hogan. ben Hogan. I think either that or the final would have to be Harry, Harry Barden. Harry, Harry Barden was another person that was bigger than life. Right. And six-time British Open champion or the Open champion. And uh, that, that's my group. Well, that's a great group. You know, you, you mentioned Walter Hagen. I've always felt that uh, he's been underappreciated his record in one sense. Um, not only was he a many-time PGA, but he also won the Western Open a number of times, which at that time, as you well know, Gary, yeah. was a major because it predated yeah. the Masters. Yeah. And if you look at some of his, if you look at his record, he should be in one sense, he's up there with his number of majors as as uh, uh, some of our top champions. Yeah. The Western Open at that time was a stronger tournament than the early early Masters, with no question. And so that's very, very true. The things that people don't appreciate about his three consecutive wins as a PGA champion was it was in match play. Now, anybody can get knocked off in match play just like that. And to do it three years in a you know, to do it time after time and not, and not lose was, I mean, it just blows my mind. It's really amazing. Gary, one final question. Tell us a little bit about your book. Uh, when golf is a ball, a lifetime of fun and adventure in a game. I've looked through it. I've paced through it. I've seen some great anecdotes covering uh, 34 countries. Tell us a little bit about it. What's, what kind of feedback you've been receiving from readers? Well, uh, the, it, I guess maybe even on the back we might have some feedback. It's saying that, one, don't walk, run to get this book because uh, it is just what it says. It is, uh, golf is, you know, when it says when golf is a ball, that means it's a lot of fun. I had a joy, a joyous time writing this book, and I can tell you that I, the best, I think the best compliment I got was from a man from Michigan who says, this is the best golf book I've ever read, and I own 2,600 golf books. So that was pretty strong. That's great. <laughs> Gary, thanks for joining us today here at the West Michigan Golf Show. Always a joy to, and a pleasure to chat with you. Thanks, Terry. Great to be here.